with ever increasing population in the country, we have to make full use of all the land that is available for cultivation. However, there are certain patches of land which cannot be cultivated due to limiting factors in the soil. Such soils are called problematic soils. Soils may become problematic due to chemical, physical and biological factors. Adopting proper reclamation measures is a must before cultivation. In this module, we will discuss problems arising in soil due to pH, presence of excess of soluble salts and sodium and we will also discuss the ways to overcome them so that soil becomes suitable for cultivation. This module is about managing problematic soils that is reclamation of acidic and alkali soils for improved cropping. Let us start by understanding the pH levels in a soil. Soil pH indicates whether a soil is acidic, alkaline or neutral. Then again, depending on the degrees of acidity or alkalinity, soils are categorized into extremely acidic, mildly acidic or very strongly alkaline, mildly alkaline, etc. The following table demonstrates or shows how the soil classification changes due to the change in pH level in soil. When the soil pH is below 4.5, the soil is classified as extremely acid. When the soil pH is between 4.5 to 5, the soil is classified as very strongly acidic. For the soil pH between 5.1 to 5.5, the soil is classified as strongly acidic. When the soil pH is between 5.6 to 6.0, the soil is classified as medium acidic. When the soil pH is between 6.1 to 6.5, the soil is classified as slightly acidic. For the soil pH between 6.6 to 7.3, the soil is neutral. And beyond 7.3, the soil starts becoming alkaline with the pH between 7.4 to 7.8, the soil is mildly alkaline. For the soil pH between 7.9 to 8.4, it is moderately alkaline. For the soil pH between 8.5 to 9.0, it is strongly alkaline. And when the soil pH is 9.1 and higher, the soil is very strongly alkaline. Neutral pH is ideal for growth of most crops. In the map, you can see the extent of acidic soils with varying degrees of acidity and salt affected soils. Low pH is soils where excessive acidity is the problem are classified into acid and acid sulfate soils. Acid soils covers almost 100 million hectare land in India. High pH soils where alkalinity is the problem are further grouped into saline soils which is white alkali with excessive soluble salts. High pH soils where alkalinity is the problem are further grouped into four kinds, saline soils or white alkali, which are with excessive soluble salts, alkali or sodic soils, which are with excessive sodium carbonate, saline alkali or sodic soils, and lastly, calcareous soils with excessive calcium carbonate. In India, there's a total of 8.57 million hectare soil are salt affected. These are the different states with different areas which are being affected.
as we can see the affected area for different states in india we are we notice that uttar pradesh is affected the most with 1.3 million hectare followed closely by gujarat and rajasthan gujarat which sits at 1.2 million hectare and rajasthan follows closely behind now let us understand the problems of acidic soils the first problem of acidic soil is toxicity of elements which is aluminium manganese and iron as the soil ph decreases due to acid nature of soil more of aluminium manganese and iron becomes soluble each individual iron has adverse impact on plant growth aluminium toxicity it inhibits root growth affects physiological processes like cell division respiration and dna synthesis it also restricts the uptake of calcium phosphorus and water manganese toxicity it accumulates in the plant and affects the normal metabolism of the plant iron toxicity under water locked condition where rice is grown the oxidized form of iron that is the ferric form fe plus 3 is reduced to the ferrous form which is fe plus 2 ferrous form being more soluble becomes excess in soil and toxic to rice plants it also creates a physiological disease of rice known as browning disease to continue with the problems of acidic soil let's move to the second one deficiency of bases as acidic soil develops in humid areas with high rainfall basic cat iron like calcium and magnesium are leached out from the soil resulting in their deficiency the third one is loss of yield in legumes the growth and development of leguminous plants suffers in acid soils as they require more of calcium and magnesium the acid soils are not able to meet this requirement the fourth problem of acidic soil is poor structure and improper aeration calcium and magnesium ions act as major binding agents in soil and help in formation of proper soil aggregates being low in these acidic soils generally have poor soil structure and thus they inhibit proper aeration the fifth problem of acidic soils is low mineralization mineralization is a process where complex organic matter consisting of nutrients in unavailable forms are broken down into simple in organic or ionic forms all plant roots take up nutrients in their most simple ionic form most of the soil microorganisms thrive around neutral ph as soil is deficient in bases their nutritional requirement is not met adequately and they will not be able to carry out mineralization properly the last problem of acidic soils is imbalance of essential nutrients elements due to acidity some undesirable elements in the soil become more soluble and then they have the capacity to prevent other essential mineral elements from entering the plants through the root system these are low availability of phosphorus acidic soils have more soluble aluminum and iron which combine with phosphorus to form their respective phosphates which get precipitated owing to their non soluble nature also the kaolinite clay mineral which is the predominant in acidic soils has better absorption capacity to available phosphorus 
Therefore, low availability of phosphorus in acidic soil is the result. Low availability of sulfur. Due to impaired microbial activity, sulfur that is mostly present in organic form cannot be converted into inorganic SO4-2 form. Low availability of molybdenum. Less soluble molybdates are produced in acidic soil, thus impairing nitrogen fixation. Now, let us understand the process of formation of acid soils. Acid soils are formed due to soil forming processes like laterization and porcelization in tropical and subtropical region. Due to heavy rainfall, base forming ions like calcium and magnesium are leached down from the soil, leaving more of acidcations like aluminium, iron, etc. The second way is decomposition of organic matter. Organic acids produced during decomposition reduce soil pH. The third method is inundation of seawater in low land areas. Land inundated with seawater is rich in sulfates. Under submergence, sulfates get reduced to to sulfides due to microbial action. Soils not very acidic when submerged but when the soil is drained the sulfide is oxidized to sulfate or sulfuric acid which increases acidity leading to a development of acid sulfate soils. Soil pH is lower than 4.0. The next one is the application of acid forming fertilizers. The first of those fertilizers are nitrogenous fertilizers. Urea and ammonium sulfate are major nitrogen fertilizers which undergo nitrification process releasing hydrogen ions into the soil system. As a result, acidity increases. The next ones are Phosphatic fertilizers. Hydrolysis of monophosphate fertilizers yields orthophosphoric acid, reducing soil pH. The third one is sulfur containing fertilizers. Application of pyrite or sulfur produces hydrogen ions and sulfur dioxide, reducing soil pH. The last one is acid rain. Industries emit sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide into the atmosphere which are transported by wind and air currents. The sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides react with water and oxygen to form sulfuric and nitric acids. These then mix with water and other materials before falling to the ground. Acid drains also reduce soil pH. So how does one overcome the deleterious effects? That is, how does one overcome the deleterious effects? We can adopt a judicious mix of two approaches to overcome the problem caused due to acidity. They are agronomic approach, and chemical approach. Agronomic approach is to grow acid tolerant crops and chemical approach is the application of Mangala Mahasetrite to correct soil pH. Let us understand both these approaches in more detail. The first one is agronomic approach which is to grow the crops which are acid tolerant. We should choose crops based on their tolerance to grow in soils of differing acidity. Following tables are good indicator of tolerance levels of different crops. The first kind of crops we are going to talk about are cereals. For crops which are maize, sorghum, wheat and barley, the optimum soil pH range is between 6.0 to 7.5. For millets, 
the optimum soil ph range is between 5.0 to 6.5 for rice the optimum soil ph range is between 4.0 to 6.0 and for oats the optimum soil ph range is between 5.0 to 7.7 .7. these are the optimum soil ranges for cereals the next category of crops is legumes for field beans soybean pea and lentil etc the optimum soil ph range is between 5.5 to 7.0 for groundnut the optimum soil ph range is between 5.3 to 6.6 for other crops like sugarcane the optimum soil ph range is 6.0 to 7.5 cotton the optimum soil ph range is between 5.0 to 6.5 for potato the optimum range is same that is between 5.0 to 6.0 for potato the optimum soil ph range is between 5.0 to 5.5 and lastly for tea the optimum soil ph range is between 4.0 to 6.0 the next approach that we will talk about is the chemical approach that is application of mangala mahasetrite acidic to correct soil ph or to increase soil ph mangala mahasetrite is an outstanding formulated soil conditioner used for reclamation of acidic soils more efficiently it is more effective in reclamation than any other soil amendment in the market at present it is economical to apply compared to traditionally used soil amendments as the quantity required to correct soil ph is quite low the active carbon that is present in mangala mahasetrite acidic helps improve soil fertility what are the benefits of mangala mahasetrite application of mangala mahasetrite acidic raises soil ph base saturation and calcium and magnesium contents as a result of ph correction the nutrient availability to plants increases it also helps in reducing the toxicities caused by the excess of aluminium manganese and iron it reduces phosphorus immobilization the calcium in mangala mahasetrite acidic helps in the formation of soil aggregates and hence it results in improving the soil structure it helps successful colonization of earthworm in pasture soils it increases the formulation of large size pores in the soil through the release of polysaccharide and the burrowing activity of earthworm overall it improves nutrient use efficiency Mangala mahasetrite acidic is a combination of multiple nutrients. It contains 15% calcium, 3% magnesium and 4% sulfur. The dosage of mangala mahasetrite acidic depends on the soil pH to be corrected. It varies from a minimum of one bag which is 50 kg to four bags that is 200 kg for the soil ph which is less than 5.2 the amount of mangala mahasetrite for acidic soils required is 200 kg per acre for the soil ph between 5.2 to 5.7 the amount of mangala mahasetrite for acidic soils required is 150 kg per acre 
For the soil pH between 5.8 to 6.2, the quantity of Mangla Mahaset pride for acidic soils required is 100 kgs per acre. And for the pH between 6.3 to 6.8, the dosage of Mangla Mahaset pride for acidic soils is 50 kgs per acre. The quantity of Mangla Mahaset pride for soil pH correction has been standardized after extensive field trials done by various agricultural research stations and universities. Now, let us discuss the time of application and the method of application of Mangla Mahasetride acidic. Regarding the time of application, as nutrient uptake depends upon soil pH, pH correction should be done before applications of fertilizers. That is why Mangala Mahasetride acidic should be applied 15 days before sowing or transplanting in case of field crops. For perennial crops, usually the fertilizers are applied in split doses, that is before monsoon and after monsoon. Perennial crops are the ones which unlike annual crops survive for several years. Now, Let's come to the method of application. It should be ensured that Mangla Mahasetrite comes in contact with soil particles in order to get better results. It can be broadcast in the field or worked into the soil for better results. To leverage the benefits of Mangla Mahasetrite acidic, it is important to understand the method of application of the same. To ensure contact between soil particles and Mangla Mahasetrite, first of all, we need to clear the basin of areca nut plant by scraping off the surface of topsoil very lightly. Then, Dig a circular trench about 10 cm deep around the base of the plant, leaving 1 to 1.5 foot from the base of the main stem. Apply Mangala Mahasetrite acidic in this trench and then cover with soil. Giving light irrigation after application helps in quicker reaction. Now, we talk about the next type of soil, which is saline soil or salt-affected soil. Saline soils usually develop in the arid and semi-arid regions where evapotranspiration exceeds precipitation. The amount of rainfall is not sufficient to leach down the soluble salts left behind on the soil by evaporation of water. The kind of salts responsible for buildup of salinity are chlorides, sulfates, carbonates and bicarbonates of calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, etc. The key characteristics of a saline soil are as soluble soils are more in saline soils, it will have EC values, which is electrical conductivity values greater than 4 dS per m. The sodium content in the soil is less and as a result, exchangeable sodium percentage, which is ESP, will be less than 15. 
as sodium is less and salts are mainly composed of chlorides and sulfates of calcium and magnesium soil ph is usually less than 8.5 this is how a saline land looks like as shown in the picture due to build up salts on the surface of a soil the a white crust can be seen what are the major production constraints in saline soils high amount of salt in the soil makes it difficult for the plant to absorb moisture or water from the soil due to osmotic potential as a result nutrients uptake by the plants are also reduced in this soil due to high salt levels microbial activity is also reduced let us understand how reclamation of saline soil is done the idea behind reclamation of saline soils is the removal of excess salts from the soil through leaching with water and drainage first method of doing it is the mechanical method in this as shown in the picture large blocks should be created in the field for the purpose of impounding water main and lateral drainage channels of 60 cm deep and 45 cm wide should be made allow good quality water with low salt content to stand in the blocks for a week most of the soluble salts would leach down below the root zone after a week standing water with dissolved soluble salts is allowed to drain two to three such treatments are given to reclaim highly saline soils the other option is scraping of the surface soil when the soluble salts accumulate on the soil surface scraping helps to remove salts this is a temporary cure and salinity again develops on such lands next method of reclamation of saline soils is cultural methods which is through irrigation use of fertilizers or crop management usually the initial growth stages of a seedling are more susceptible to salt injury if seedlings escape salt injury in the initial phases then it is easy for them to establish in the field at later stages for this reason avoid planting the seed in the center of the raised bed or ridge as it is the spot of greatest salt accumulation instead plant the seed on the sloping side just above the water line to reduce salt injury to the germinating seeds alternate furrow irrigation is advantageous as the salts can be displaced beyond single seed row application of straw mulch has been found to curtail the evaporation from the soil surface resulting in reduced salt concentration in the root zone profile within 30 days plowing and leveling of the land also increases the infiltration and percolation rate therefore salts leach down to lower levels The next method for the reclamation of saline soil is irrigation method. Proportional mixing of good water with saline water if available mix good quality water with saline water in 1 is to 1 proportion before irrigating so that the salt content in the water comes down and helps reduce the effect of salinity. proper use of irrigation water if the field is allowed to dry up the ill effects of salinity will be felt more that is why try to keep the soil around the root zone of the crop at field capacity
alternate furrow irrigation favors growth of plant better than flooding flooding requires a large amount of water which brings more amount of salt into the field this can be avoided if alternate furrow irrigation is followed follow drip sprinkler and pitcher irrigation wherever possible they have been found to be more efficient than the conventional flood irrigation method since relatively lesser amount of water is used under these improved methods and hence it they result in lower salt build up The last one under irrigation method are providing proper drainage. Once the excess salt salts are removed from the soil around the root zones of the plant, it is essential to see that they are removed from the field itself by providing proper drainage. In absence of proper drainage, salts will once again come to the surface of the soil with evaporating water. after irrigation management the next method for fertilizer manage the next method for reclamation of saline soil is fertilizer management addition of bulky organic manures like farm yard manure compost etc helps in reducing the ill effects of salinity due to release of organic acids produced during decomposition green manuring with which is sunhem dainchha kalinji and or green leaf manuring also counteracts the effect of salinity addition of extra dose of nitrogen to the tune of 20 to 25% of the recommended level will compensate the low availability of nitrogen in these soils The next one is growing crops based on their soil salinity levels. This also helps in reclamation of saline soils. We will study the relative tolerance of different crops to salinity. We need to grow crops based on the soil salinity level. As we can see for the field crops for the species cotton, the salinity threshold level is 7.7. for sugar beet it is 7.0 for sorghum it is 6.8 for wheat it is 6.0 for soybean it is 5.0 groundnut it is 3.2 rice is 3.0 maize is 1.7 and sugarcane is also 1.7 these are the relative tolerance 
of different crops to salinity. Cotton is the most tolerant and sugarcane is the least tolerant. In vegetables, tomato has a tolerance of 2.5. Cabbage has a tolerance of 1.8. The salinity threshold of potato is 1.7. For onion, it is 1.2 and for carrot, it is 1.0. Next, we will understand are the types of soil which is alkai or sodic soils. As alkai or sodic soils have relatively low soluble salts, their EC values are less than 4 ds per m. Due to high amount of sodium in the soil, exchangeable sodium percentage is greater than 15 and soil pH is usually between 8.5 to 10. Sodium impacts the productivity of soil. The expected loss of soil productivity due to presence of sodium is more in heavy and textured black soils than in light textured soils. Let us discuss the expected loss of soil productivity due to ESP, which is exchangeable sodium percentage in different soils. When the exchangeable sodium percentage is up to 5%, then the loss in productivity in alluvium derived soils is nil and in black soils is up to 10. When the exchangeable sodium productivity is between 5% to 15%, then the loss in alluvium derived soils is less than 10% and in black soils the loss in productivity is between 10% to 25%. When the ESP ranges between 15% to 40% then loss in productivity in alluvium derived soils is between 10% to 25% and in black soils, the loss in productivity is between 25% to 50%. And when the ESP percentage is above 40, then the loss in productivity in alluvium derived soils is between 25% to 50%. And in black soils, it is more than 50%. The smallest of the soil particles are called soil colloids and they are generally negatively charged. They can retain positively charged ions or cations on their surface. Calcium and magnesium are the principal cations found on the normal soils in arid regions. However, if soils are rich in sodium containing minerals instead of calcium and magnesium, Sodium becomes the predominating ion on the soil surface. This creates alkali or sodic soils. Following are the major production constraints of an alkali soil. Dispersion of soil colloids and effects of physical and chemical properties of soils. Let's discuss them in detail. Dispersion of soil colloids. Sodium is a good dispersing agent. As alkali soils contain more sodium, dispersion of soil particles takes place thus destroying soil structure. Effects of physical and chemical properties of soil. As a result of the phenomena of dispersion of soil colloids, the macro and micro pores responsible for aeration and moisture retention in the soil get blocked. Plants grown in alkali soils suffer due to lack of aeration. The blocking of pores makes soil less permeable to water. As a result, stagnation of water in the field is a common occurrence. Due to water stagnation, plant roots suffer for want of oxygen. The high pH affects the growth of microbes thus reducing the rate of mineralization, uh, reduces the availability of nutrients to the plants. For reclamation of alkali soils, following methods are useful. The first method is physical amelioration. This does not actually remove sodium from exchange complex, 
but improves physical condition of the soil through improvement in infiltration and aeration. The commonly followed physical methods include deep ploughing, Deep ploughing is adopted to break the hot pan developed at subsurface due to sodium and improving free movement of water. This also helps in movement of aeration. Providing drainage is also practiced to improve aeration and to remove further accumulation of salts at root zone. Sand filling which reduces the heaviness of the soil and increases capillary movements of water. Profile inversion, inverting the soil benefits in improvement of physical condition of soil as that of deep ploughing. The next method for reclamation of alkali soils is using Mangala Mahasetrite alkaline for chemical reclamation. The main idea behind reclamation of sodic soils is replacement of sodium ions from soil exchange complex by calcium ions. Once the sodium comes into the salt, the same has to be drained away below the effective root zone by leaching with good irrigation water. Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline can be very effective for reclamation of sodic soils. The features of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline are that it is an outstanding formulated soil conditioner. Being formulated, it reclaims alkali soils more efficiently. It is more effective than any other soil amendment available in the market at present. Low dosage rates are sufficient. Presence of active carbon helps improving the soil fertility. The benefits of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline application are it helps in making the nutrients readily available to the plants. Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline reduces phosphorus immobilization. Calcium in Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline displaces sodium ion from colloidal clay complex. It helps in formation of soil aggregates, hence improving the soil structure. Mangla Mahasetrite application also helps successful colonization of earthworms in soil. It increases macroporosity through the release of polysaccharide and the burrowing activity of earthworm and it improves nutrient use efficiency. What is the composition of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline and the dosage of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline? The composition is such that it contains 15% calcium, 3% magnesium and 5% sulfur. And the dosage of Mangla Mahasetrite depends on the soil pH to be corrected. It varies from a minimum of 1 bag which is 50 kgs to 4 bags which is 200 kgs. When the soil pH is between 7.3 to 7.7, .7, the dosage required is 50 kgs per acre. When the soil pH is between 7.8 to 8.2, then the amount of Mangla Setrite alkaline required is 100 kgs per acre. When the soil pH is between 8.3 to 8.6, then the dosage of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline is 150 kgs per acre. And when the soil pH is above 8.6 then the amount of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline required is 200 kgs per acre. The quantity of Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline for soil pH correction has been standardized after extensive field trials by various agricultural research stations and universities. Now let us understand how and when to apply Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline. Regarding the time of application, as the nutrient uptake depends on soil pH, pH correction should be done before application of fertilizers. That is why 
Mangla Mahasetrite Alkaline should be applied 15 days before sowing or transplanting in case of field crops. For perennial crops, the fertilizers are usually applied in split doses, that is, before monsoon and after monsoon. Therefore, Mangla Mahasetrite should be applied only once, 15 days or 2 weeks prior to fertilizer application. Coming to the method of application, it should be ensured that Mangla Mahasetrite alkaline comes in contact with soil particles in order to get better results. It can be broadcast in the field or worked into the soil for better results. Now, the next thing is to discuss the choice of crops or preferred crops for alkali soils. Growing rice is preferred in alkali soils. Going in for agroforestry scheme systems like silviculture, silvipasture, etc. This is because these three species have deep root system and will not be affected due to the sodium carbonate in the soil surface. Also, these three species produce sizable quantity of leaf litter and after decomposition, the organic acids produced help in managing alkali soils better. Paragrass, Bermuda grass, etc. have, have also been reported to produce 50% yield at ESP levels above 30, that is, reasonably well in sodic soils. Let us now discuss the relative tolerance of crops to sodicity. Different crops have different degrees of tolerance to sodicity. Rice can be grown in alkali soils as they have better tolerance to sodicity. Other crops should be grown depending on their ability to withstand sodium toxicity. Let us look at these crop ranges with their ranges for tolerance of sodicity. For the exchangeable sodium percentage range between 2 to 10, the crops are deciduous fruits, nuts, citrus and avocado. The crops which have a tolerance of exchangeable sodium percentage between 10 to 15, the crops are safflower, black gram, peas, lentil and pigeon pea. For the crops which have ESP range between 16 and 20 are chickpea and soybean. The crops with ESP range between 20 to 25 are clover, groundnut, cowpea and pearl millet. The crops which have ESP tolerance range between 25 to 30 are linseed, garlic and cluster bean. The crops which have the tolerance between 30 to 50 for ESP range are oats, mustard, cotton, wheat and tomatoes. The crops which have the tolerance range between 50 to 60 are beets, barley and sesbania. And the crop which has the highest tolerance of ESP range that is between 60 to 70 is rice. Please note all the crops that we have discussed, they have relative yields of only 50% of their potential in the respective sodicity ranges. Moving from crops to trees, the relative tolerance of trees to sodicity is what we will discuss next. As with annual crops, the degree of tolerance of perennial crops to sodicity varies and it is found that bare, tamarind, sapota, wood apple, date palm, etc. have the highest degree of tolerance, tolerance of 40 to 50 for ESP. The trees of pomegranate has medium tolerance to sodicity they have a range between 30 to 40 for ESP. Guava, lemon and grape have low tolerance to sodicity between 20 to 30. And the trees of mango, 
jackfruit and banana are sensitive to sodicity having an ESP of 20. Thank you.